Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to automatically deploy a website to Amazon S3 using AWS Code Pipeline and a few other AWS services. You can see here in the workflow, you'll push your code to a repo, in this case AWS Code Commit, and you can connect it to others like GitHub, Bitbucket, something like that, and using webhooks, but for this example we're going to stick with all AWS services push the code to the repo that triggers an event which runs the pipeline which pushes all of your files into your S3 bucket which is where your website is hosted a few assumptions going into this you have an IAM user this is following the AWS best practice after you create a root account you create an IAM user and you will need access to code commit, code pipeline S3, and CloudWatch events, which are now called EventBridge. And you will you'll need separate credentials for code commit. You can see here's an example of when you're in the, the root account that you go to your users, I think it's under the yeah security credentials section and you can generate some Git credentials. Uh, those are separate from the user login, and you will need those. Uh, this right here, AWS command line interface, this is optional. You don't need it for this video. I'm just using traditional Git commands. But if you want to do Git credential helper and, and things like that that are associated with code commit, you will need the AWS CLI. And if you don't have it, you might as well install it because as you use AWS more and more, it's going to be helpful to have the CLI and not do everything using the graphical user interface and the console. And I'm assuming you have some basic Git knowledge. So a quick look at what we're going to do here. We have a basic website, and we're going to make some changes to it. There's an, an image and some text, and you can see here, how simple it is. For this example, the site doesn't need to be fancy at all. You can make a really complicated site if you want, but I just want to show you a, a static site. Put some styles in here. Got a couple of images. Here's the code commit image. We're going to change it to code pipeline image, and we're going to change the text to say code pipeline instead of code commit. There's the reset. I'm going to change the text. The background is going to be a blue color instead of white. The text is going to be black. Well, it's black now. I'm going to change it to white. And then you can see the basic styles there. Before I make the changes, though, I want to show you that I have no pipelines, no repos, no S3 bucket. We're going to create all those, show you how those integrate, and show you that it's probably easier than you realize. So first thing is we're going to need to create a repo. And I'm going to call this Static Site YouTube. You can add a description if you want. You can add tags. I'm keeping it really simple for the video. I'm not going to check this box here. I'm going to create the repo. So there it is. There's no code yet. Um, and then let's create an S3 bucket because we're, we're going to need to put our files somewhere and we're going to host our website using S3. So we're going to create a bucket. We don't have any right now. And I'm going to call this static site YouTube. 12-18-2022, today's date. And I'm going to uncheck this. Now, for this video, I'm going to do it with public access. I'm going to acknowledge here. I don't recommend this for production sites. There's a way that you can keep access blocked to the public use S3 for hosting all of your files for a website, but go securely through CloudFront. 
and I made a video on that that you can see. This is just to keep it simple, and I'm doing it so the video is a lot shorter. But I'll link the video that shows you how to not give public access and still host a website, in case you're interested. Create this bucket. And then I'm going to make a couple changes. I'm going into the properties and static website hosting. I'm going to enable index.html. That's what I'm going to use for the index document. And save that. And then in the permissions, I'm going to add a bucket policy for public access, and I have one here from the AWS site. I'm gonna copy this and drop this in, copy it here, edit, paste, and then I don't need this condition, so two curly braces, make sure you don't delete too many. And we don't need that comma there. So there's our bucket policy. This is giving public read access only, get object. So all you can do is read, that's all we need you to do. So you can see the website. Okay, we've got an error here. Oh, of course, we gotta put the bucket name. So the bucket name here, and replace it before the slash, after the three colons there. Paste it in there, and I'm gonna save that. All right, what's going on here? There we go. Okay, that's what your policy should look like. And block all public access is off, so the public has access to read the files so they can see the site. And again, I'm going to link to a way to not do this for production websites. You can you don't have to give public access to host your websites with S3. And so we've got a bucket now with public access. We've got a repo that doesn't have any code in it yet. So again, we have one, one repo, static site YouTube it's called. And we don't have a pipeline yet, but now we want to create a pipeline. So create a pipeline, call it whatever you want. We're going to call it S3 static pipeline, call it my pipeline, call it whatever you want to call it. New service role. I'll leave the role name checked. Leave this checked. We want to allow AWS Code Pipeline to create a service for us. I'm not going to do anything with advanced settings. Just leave the defaults checked. Next. Source provider is going to be AWS Code Commit. We're going to use the repo that we just created, static site YouTube, branch name, I'm not going to choose the branch right now. And CloudWatch Events, which is called EventBridge now. We're going to leave this selected because as soon as we push the code, we want the event to be triggered. We don't want to check periodically. We want it to be as soon as the, we push the code. So we run that pipeline. Okay. And then we're going to use the default zip format. Next. Okay, man, I do need to select the branch. So I know my branch is called main. Depending how you set it up, your your branch might be called master, it might be called main, whatever you call it. You can rename your branch. Just remember that when you push your code, you got to push it to the right branch. Build provider. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to skip this build stage. This is a static site, and you can... If you want to, you can make this more complicated, but for now, I'm gonna skip the build stage. 
there's a warning. I'm going to say skip. Deploy provider, S3. Northern Virginia, that's where I created it and I called it static site YouTube. And make sure that you check the extract file. So we're going to unzip it before deploying. Uh, nothing, not going to choose any additional configuration for now. And going next, create the pipeline. Okay, that is in progress. So we have a pipeline, we have one repo with no files in it yet, and we have an S3 bucket with public access that does not have any files yet. So what's the easiest way to get files in here? Well, you can manually drag files into S3. We don't have very many, it would be pretty easy. But imagine if you had 100 files. We want to do this the easy way. So let's go back. Let's look at the code commit. So I'm looking here. I'm going to. Now we could clone this repo if we already had files in it, but I'm not going to do that. But what I want to do, I want to clone the URL. So clone HTTPS is what I'm going to do here. And now, depending on your project, you may need to run, you may need to do git init. I already have. And you might need to, depending on where you're at in the project, you might need to add the files. That's why I assumed you had some basic git knowledge going into this. And I'm going to set the URL because I already have a, a URL set for this. So I'm going to say, Git remote set URL. You might have to do git remote add and put the URL, but I'm going to say git remote set URL. And then I'm going to add in that URL there. So this is our code commit repo there. So I'm setting the URL. Actually, I need to add one more thing. I need to add it in the origin. Origin set URL is what I need to do. I think I had it right the first time. Git remote set URL origin. There we go. So, and then now just to look, I'm on the main branch. You may be on a different branch. You may be on master. Depends on how you set it up. If you've just initialized using git init, you're probably going to need to push your files. You're going to need to add them. I don't have anything to add. You know, I'm nothing to commit. So I'm just going to say git push origin main is what I'm going to do. And then now you are going to have to put in uh, a username and password. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to put in a password. And then now let's look what happened. If I go back to the pipeline, let's refresh here. Uh, so succeeded. All right. So now let me look at the uh, the repo here. So repositories, static site, YouTube. I've got files now in code commit. I didn't have anything before, but just using the git push is how they ended up in code commit. That triggers an event which runs the pipeline, and you can see that it succeeded. Then now, when I refresh, I should have files inside of my S3 bucket, which I do. 
and I gave public access. So now if I look at the index, that HTML, we can see the, the website. And so here's the local site. You can see that. But here it is on S3. So same site. So that git push origin main or whatever branch you're on, it put the code inside of code commit, it ran the pipeline, and it added the files to S3. So now that everything is set up, I'll show you how easy it is to make a change. So we go back in, and let's say I want to, instead of saying code commit, I'm going to say code pipeline. That's what I'm going to put in the paragraph. And then I'm going to change the image. So it is this right now, code commit, and I want to change it to this code pipeline image. So I'm going to say code pipeline. Go ahead and change the alt text. Code pipeline. Then I'm going to go into the styles. And I'm going to comment out this background color and uncomment the blue color. So now instead of the white background, we've got a blue background. And then I'm going to uncomment out this here because we had black text and now it's going to be white text. So we change the index that HTML, we change style that CSS. So we have two pending changes. Just going to make sure that's all saved. We'll do a git status. You can see I have two files that haven't been changed. So I'm going to add those files. Git add. And then check. All right. They've both been added. And I'm going to commit those changes with a message. And I'm just going to say change image and background color text, change that, and then commit it. So I committed the changes. I have not pushed them yet. I'm, I'm getting ready to push them, but I want to show you really quick. And you look here. So here is the local site now. I changed. So right, it was code commit with the black text and the code commit symbol graphic. And now the changes on locally, you can see the changes. It's now code pipeline instead of code commit. I've got a nice blue background and the code pipeline graphic. So if I go back in here now, so if I look at the pipeline, I can see three minutes ago it succeeded. Got my files there in code commit. I'm going to go back into, uh, I'm going to push these to my main branch. So I'm going to say git push origin main. I'm going to have to put in my username and password. Password. Push those changes. Now let's see what's going on with pipeline. So I'm going to refresh the page. Nothing yet. Give it a minute. Refresh it again. Uh, just now. So it, it said four minutes ago and and you can see it ran again. So now if I refresh this page, the S3 page, I've got the changes. So that's how easy it is to create a pipeline for your S3 hosted website. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.